race or a whole um, group of people by those few things that you kind of hear most about, it's ignorance to the maximum because, you know, you can't judge every person like that. In our everyday conversation, we think about racism in terms of uh, an act of hatred towards between one individual and another or an act of violence between one individual or another. And that, that's obviously one aspect of racism. Racism can also be a kind of belief system. So you might have a belief that one group or, or another has some superiority to another group, which you may never act out or you may never express, but you'd still have a racist belief. I just think that society doesn't necessarily make young black males feel comfortable in this country. And it comes from the police service, it comes from our education system. You always kind of feel slightly disassociated with society. If people have prejudices and hold negative stereotypes, they may not treat other people equally. This can be done unwittingly or wittingly, and it's discrimination. I know in school a lot, black boys were probably treated a lot differently to white boys, and it might have just been because of the stereotype behind them, because maybe they're, they're troublemakers and that's how they're always being, so the teachers have to treat them in a certain way to handle it, but then to a certain degree that's a form of racism, or it's a prejudiced thought that have led to them being treated differently. Discrimination is against the law. There's, a, there's race relations acts which mean that a school has a duty to ensure that everyone um, in that school has an equal opportunity no matter what their um, national, ethnic or racial or cultural background. But obviously a law by itself doesn't necessarily change behaviour. Prejudice against people coming into the country is not a new thing. Can you guess when and about whom this quote was written? These unwashed, cringing, lying and wage-cutting aliens who have elbowed thousands of Englishmen out of their home and out of their employment. I didn't expect there to be any racism then, but then that probably shows that racism is being handed down. It probably shows that um, the people who are committing the racism has, cha has not changed, but the target groups or the victims have changed. I mean, yeah, the, I don't know who they might have been targeting. So why the straight spread of people now that yeah. they can target? And I don't know who they might have been targeting in 1904, but... Scottish or Irish, you know? Yeah. Or Welsh people? Yeah, probably, who they, thought, probably who they thought were illegal immigrants at that mm. time. It was actually written about Jewish refugees, but could have been about any group who had ever come to Britain. You can go back and look at the history of anti-Semitism, which in England goes back, you know, to um, 1290 when all Jews were expelled from England. You can look at racism against gypsies, which again hasn't been based on skin colour, but has a long history in Britain. You can talk about racism um, against Irish people, which wasn't based on skin colour, but on um, an idea that the Irish were um, some kind of subhuman um, species. I guess about 100 years ago really was the heyday of, of skin colour racism, largely because of the fact that Britain had an empire that took in Africa and Asia. And so race as a skin colour idea became a way of legitimating that empire. Racism was used to justify the slave trade when it was profitable to think of black people being closer to animals than to human beings. In the 19th century, some scientists tried hard to prove the theory that black people were inferior. Today, most scientists believe that there is only one race, the human race, and that everyone originally came from Africa. But a small group, at least, of people came out of Africa, and they formed the ancestors of everyone else around the world. So, we all began as Africans, and I think it's true to say that Although we may look at the surface the skin features and see people in different sizes and shapes and colours, that once you strip away the skin and the superficial covering, underneath we're all very similar. We're certainly one species and very closely related to each other. So if race isn't biological and is a social construct, why does prejudice exist? I think people have always feared migrants or strangers for the same reasons. They fear they will fundamentally alter the culture, I suppose the religious culture or the political culture. It's a fear and a suspicion of anything strange and different. There's a process where new groups 
are created as, a, as a, an object of racism all the time. So one example would be asylum seekers who have been recently brought to the fore as a target for racism. No doubt in the future we'll see other groups. So racism changes as society changes.